Hello and welcome to the Vaults of Terror. My name is Ed and today we're going to be continuing our Space Marines Chapters videos with a look at the Minotaurs. Now, the Minotaurs are a relatively unknown chapter, although they do feature in the Warhammer 40,000 lore quite a bit in the background, so I thought I would cover those today and go over their rather interesting history. Now, the Minotaurs are quite a mysterious chapter, and they have a reputation for brutality, even amongst the Space Marines of the Imperium, who are known for being very brutal in their conflict. They were originally part of the Cursed 21st founding, although their founding chapter is unknown, so we don't know what links them to the original eight first founding chapters. Their current chapter master is the rather insular and paranoid Asterion Moloch. They are a fleet-based chapter, and their main ship is the relic ship Daedalus Carter, and they have no battle cry, unfortunately. Now, to get started on their history, as I said, they are quite a mysterious chapter, and their past is relatively uncertain. In fact, most of their records are sealed, and even Imperial Inquisitors have trouble accessing the information about them. In addition, many other records that would usually be created during the lifetime of a Space Marines chapter have been lost or mislaid, which is rather interesting considering the amount of information stored by the Imperium. There are also rumours that this chapter in the 41st millennium is not in fact the same chapter that was originally founded, although there's very little solid information on this subject. There are also rumours that this chapter have ties to the High Lords of Terror and may be controlled by them directly, something which is actually banned under Imperial law to prevent any Space Marine chapter, to prevent the High Lords having even a sliver of the same power that Horus had during the Horus Heresy. However, as I've mentioned, this is all based in rumour, so there's no direct facts relating to this point. Now, as mentioned, they were founded in the 38th millennium as part of the 21st Cursed Founding. However, it appears they avoided any direct genetic mutations, so unlike the Black Dragons, they don't have any sort of visual mutation. However, they became known as Berserkers in combat, fighting rapidly and brutally against the enemy, and usually discarding tactics in order to directly attack the enemy and take the fight to them face to face. Now, of course, this meant that although they were quick to arrive on the battlefield when needed, they actually ignored the chain of command mostly, and when they attacked the enemy directly, they shattered most of the battle plans that had been laid, and sometimes led to more losses on the Imperial side than if they hadn't even arrived to help in the first place. By the end of the 38th millennium, they had gained this reputation as unreliable berserkers, and so they ended up not receiving any more requests for assistance. This led to a lack of communication with the chapter, which ended with them disappearing from the face of the Imperium. By the very end of the 38th millennium. Now, in recent times, they unexpectedly reappeared during the Markarian Heresy, and unusually, they actually operated in concert with larger Imperial battle plans, going where they were needed and performing the tasks that were required of them. Now, they actually attempted to remain away from most Imperial observations, staying well back of the front line, and usually engaging the enemy where other Imperial forces couldn't see them. However, there were a lot of observations that this suddenly reappeared chapter was incredibly well equipped, and had full complements of armour, weaponry, and even starships, all of which was very well maintained, which would have been impossible had they been lost for almost 2,000 years. Interestingly, they also obeyed any orders issued by the High Lords of Terror themselves, and obeyed with an obedience that bordered on slavish devotion. Now, some see this as an explanation as to why they were so well equipped, because they had the favour of the High Lords, but there is only speculation as to how this arrangement came to be, if one exists of course. Now, we do see they have the favour of the High Lords, but they are actually distrusted by many of their fellow Astartes, and none more so than the Ultramarines and their allied successor chapters. The Ultramarines and their successors refused to fight alongside the Minotaurs, and there's several reasons for this. Mainly, the Minotaurs' almost total eradication of the Inceptors chapter of Space Marines, who were a successor of the Ultramarines, in what some saw as an overreaction, ending their armed dispute with another chapter by completely decimating the Inceptors and reducing them to barely 100 Marines in strength. There was also a public insult of Marnius Calgar, and provocation to combat given to the Genesis chapter, which is another successor of the Ultramarines, during the 14th Siege of Antigonus. Because of these disputes, the Ultramarines have denied the Minotaurs access to the Ultimar realm, although of course the High Lords can order them through it, the Ultramarines will be greatly resistant to any transport by the Minotaurs through their space. Now, the Minotaurs also entered the Badab War, with them committing their entire chapter strength to the campaign, and operating as a largely independent raiding and harassment force. Now, their most lauded achievement during the war was the complete defeat and surrender of the Lamenters, who was one of the rebel chapters who was eventually brought back into line, as mentioned in my previous video. And this battle took the form of a 17-hour boarding action against the Lamenters' fleet, 
and in the close call to battle, although grievous losses were caused to both sides, in the end it was the Lamenters who surrendered to the Minotaur's forces. And this is really the extent of the Minotaur's history. It's not as detailed as we'd like. As you can see, there is some question here as to who the Minotaurs are and to whom they owe their devotion. Now, in relation to their organisation, they are a codex adherent chapter, although they do prefer to fight at chapter strength rather than splitting into smaller company forces, which means that they are usually a thousand marines available to any conflict. As mentioned, they are supremely well equipped, and seem able to replace any losses of both material and personnel with very little difficulty. Now, it's because of this the Minotaurs are reckoned to be almost always around full strength of about a thousand marines, with their indoctrination and genetic manipulation being remarkably swift when they're recruiting new space marines, turning a scout into a battle brother in a very short period of time, by Astartes standards of course. They also have a heavy use of hypno-indoctrination and neurocerebral surgery involved in their recruitment process, as well as monitoring and refreshing of these techniques in full marines by their apothecaries of the chapter. Finally, from a purely technical point of view, the Minotaurs, as I said, are supremely well equipped with Space Marine arms and armour, including almost full stocks of tactical dreadnought armour, which is Terminator armour, and Mark VIII power armour, which in the rest of the Imperium is very rare. And, of course, again, this is another indication that there may be some link between the very powerful High Lords of Terror and this ill-reputed chapter. Now this is everything I had to say on the Minotaurs this time. If there's anything you think I've missed, you can include it in the comments below. If you have any suggestions for upcoming videos, including new Space Marine chapter videos, or new regiments to feature in the Imperial Guard videos, then please do respond in the comments below, or go to the Vox Relay, which is the Vaults of Terror forum, linked in the description below, where you can vote for the chapter or regiment that you want to see next. Now next time there will be another Death Corps of Krieg video, which will go into explaining a little bit more about their organisation and some more of their background, which is rather detailed which is nice. Of course we're still looking for suggestions as to what to do for our celebration of our 20,000th subscriber, so do let us know in the comments below or go to the Vox Relay and there are some suggestions we can look at there. Okay, that's everything we wanted to say today. See you next time on the Vaults of Terror. <laughs>